Hello everybody, Drifty here from Driftwood Gaming, and we're going to continue our Let's Make a Game series. This is going to be episode number 9. So, I originally said that I was going to do 99% of everything in this game on camera, but after considering how long it's going to take and the extent and the magnitude of this demo, I want it to be 5-6 hours at least. Um, it's going to take like two to 300 episodes to actually make that happen. And rather than make you guys wait through uh, that long, I want to get it to you sooner. So I started working on this project off camera a little bit. So I put in a few hours uh, off camera and I think I'll do this in between each game. Just put a little extra time in just so that each episode feels a little bit different than the last episode. And we're not like retracing the same things over and over and, and it doesn't feel so slow. So uh, in this episode, quite a few things have changed. Nothing dramatic, but um, I did add quite a few uh, new skills. I've added a new enemy. Um, <clears throat> I've added the sewer mutant, which is going to be the first, uh, well, actually second boss. It's going to be the first boss you have to fight, It's the because since the first boss is optional. But you definitely want to fight him because you get some good rewards and easy experience, basically, now that I've upped the levels. Um, changed some numbers around, minor balancing things. Uh, like I said, created some new skills, um, created a new class, uh, the naturalist. We, I haven't uh, finished making the skills for that, so we'll continue on working on the naturalist. What I'm going to be doing in this game is uh, having you switch main heroes uh, just at the beginning of the game so that you can uh, see where each character comes from, not just add them to your party. You're going to see them and their where they start at, and then eventually all of the all of the party members are going to coalesce into one area where you can select from probably the eight to ten different uh, characters uh, with several different classes. Um, I think in the last episode um, I told you guys about how I got rid of the um, skills based off job points and went with just enhancing stats with job points so those have been renamed. Some of the skills have been tweaked a little tiny bit. Um, did uh, get a, somebody comment on how I derped on <laughs> Offensive and, and defensive stance. Thank you for the comment. It's going to improve the game, so I really appreciate it. Um, basically, we don't have to make a common event to erase the offensive and defensive states. All, it's really simple. All you have to do is just remove state. So we're going to do that. I thought I would uh, humiliate myself and show you <laughs> right off the bat. Um, you, you don't need a common event. Just make it remove state. And yeah, I knew this, but there's always going to be that derpiness that happens in between. So we're going to get rid of that common event and probably clear up those spaces later on. So when we use offensive stance, it's going to 100% remove state. You know, it was working how I got it working, but the thing is optimization is important when you're making a game. So if we can free up some common events, we're going to. So when we use offensive stance, it's going to add offensive stance and remove defensive stance. Simple as that. So let's go ahead and delete these, uh, check state common events we don't need these at all anymore so thank you for that comment um also if you guys have recommendations or you see me do something um and you would like to see it done in a specific way i, I uh, this is a game for you guys this is going to be a free-to-play game you guys uh, i will put a donation link up like at the end after it's already done because i put so many hours into it but don't feel obligated to donate or anything because this is something that i'm enjoying uh doing so uh, one thing I did do is I changed all of the names, well not all of them, most of them, I changed the, the names of the stats just to, um, sometimes you don't want to change things just for the sake of, uh, to change it so that it's not default because a lot of the things are, are actually, de the, a lot of the default uh, parameters are, are already pretty uh, specific and, uh, and known and uh, people understand what they do so I didn't want to change things too much. But I did edit some terms, so I'll go over some of the terms that I've changed. Uh, this was HP, and I changed it to health points. MP changed it to mana points. I know some of you are going to be like, it's magic points, but whatever. It doesn't matter. Same thing, mana magic. Uh, TP, I've changed that to limit points, and we've changed the TP to LP. Um, experience, I just spelled it out. Experience. Um, attack is now strength. Defense is now vitality. Uh, magic attack is wisdom. Magic defense will be willpower. Agility is speed, and luck is still luck, because luck. Hit rate is uh, renamed to accuracy. I feel like this is one of the best changes, because hit rate can be con uh, confusing. A lot of people will mistake hit rate. I did, I know, when I first started learning. I thought hit rate was like aggro, but that's actually target rate. 
so I was confused with hit rate and target rate for a little while. So if we were to rename hit rate to accuracy, that clears up so many things. So um, I'm going to go with accuracy for hit rate. The rest of the stuff I've left the same. Uh, I changed escape to retreat. Um, I think that's probably about it. Uh, when, uh, I think end game, yeah. Instead of game end, I just reversed that and said end game. I don't know, it seems like, you know, logic. But everything else, pretty much the same. I didn't mess with any of the messages since we're not really displaying most of the messages anyway because we're using a lot of the Antifaz plugins, which optimizes and gets rid of the spam that's just really just spam. Added some items around town. I think I discussed that last episode, though. Um, made the emergency staff. This was for a tutorial. Also made a skill that was for a tutorial, random attack animations. I'm not going to be, be doing too many tutorial things using this project, but every now and then I'll put one or two tutorial items into this uh, this project just when I think they might be used. I might be using this on some skill. Um, I will be using the the weapon that we created, the emergency staff, and I guess I'll put, a, put that link in the card so you guys can see that. Uh, change the descriptions of items instead of saying ATK plus 25 because I like my items to say the stats. Because of item variance, it's hard to tell what the base stats were supposed to be. So you don't really know if you got a good roll on that or a bad roll. If we just saw the heavy mace and it said strength plus 30, we're like, okay, 30 strength. But that you wouldn't even, you would probably never know that it could have been 40, you know. So if by putting strength plus 35 with a variance of 5 and you know that you got 30, you know that was a bad roll and not, not a good roll. But yeah, so um, change attacks to, to everything is still abbreviated with three uh, three letters. I like that kind of schema. That uh, I forgot what it's called. There's another word for it. It's, um, so uh, ATK is STR for strength. Uh, MAT is now WIS. Now keep in mind you can change all of these, but when you do your um, your formulas, you still have to use the .ATK .MAT all of that. So haven't changed the formulas for these because you have to actually use predefined uh, words, things. Um, did I add any skills? Let's see, yes, I added a few skills. Um, uh, also up updated some descriptions, so now that it shows icons in the descriptions, I just thought it was a little bit of extra flavor. You know, I like seeing, who doesn't like having extra icons in their descriptions? It's kind of cool. So in this episode, what I'd like to do is continue the, uh, the database uh, editing, uh, continue working on the naturalists, add a few new maps, and uh, I think what we'll start off is um, starting from the beginning and uh, show you to the point where we've got to. We should be able to get to, the, to that point within five to ten minutes. Um, so I'll take you to the first, uh, well, the second boss fight, the first mandatory boss fight. and. Um, like I said, I wanted the player to have lots of different options with what they're doing and, and where they're going, and and uh, their decisions will matter in this game. So we're going to have a route in the sewers that goes to the left. So this route is probably we're going to be doing this map uh, next. <clears throat> are these the lights? I think these are the lights. Yeah, these are the lighting. So what we're going to do is move the lighting forward because we're going to do transfer events right here. But we've already finished the if the player decides to go north. So um, that would take them to this route. I've changed this map around a little bit. Um, it generally looks the same because all I've done is minor details with uh, certain tiles just look funky. Like um, I can illustrate like I would have like this uh, over here and like certain things like that kind of looks funny how it is right there. So I've just uh, gone through meticulously and, and cleaned it up a little bit. Like I still see some kind of bothers me but um, as I see it I'll, I'll be fixing that so you know it's very subtle some of you will know exactly what I'm talking about as I change these things so that it kind of matches the tiles a little bit better stuff like that I mean There's no right or wrong way to do this, really. It's just a matter of what you think it should look like, and then making it look like that. But I don't want to just go over that over and over. It still looks funny over here. don't know what to do about it. It's kind of funny right here to me. I'm not sure what to do about it. But as far as when it comes to two tiles or three tiles, it looks fine. Like right here, it looks pretty cool. It looks good. 
But then when you start getting blocks like this, uh, that are not layering exactly how I want them to layer. It's not even layering, it's just not selecting the right ones. This looks fine, this looks funny to me, but I don't want to dwell on that too much. Here's where our boss fight is going to be. Added a little bit of flavor in here, I can show you the vent real quick. But I don't want to spoil too much, I'll just take you through the beginning and then we'll start editing. So at the end of this boss fight, this is going to be the end of chapter one, basically. It's going to, we're going to do party change and it's going to, depending on if you went north, you're going to end up going to the castle and you're going to be going through like uh, an event where you have a new party member and there's some drama going on at the castle and you have to do something that we're going to figure out at the castle. And then later on, when you're finished with that event, uh, with the new party, with the new character, uh, in the castle, you're going to meet up with uh, Driftwood and Tiana, and then they're, they're going to join. But if you decided to go west through the sewers, then there's going to be another map right here. So we'll create a new map, and uh, there's going to be that boss fight. Uh, no matter which way you go, you're going to have to fight uh, a boss. I don't know if I want to make the boss different. It doesn't seem like that would really matter. Once it's balanced, it should be fine no matter if you go left or right. But if you beat it on one side, it's going to be gone on both sides, basically. Um, but if you go left, instead of going to um, the castle and going through the castle event, you're going to be uh, kind of forced into a, a forest area where the naturalist is going to come into play. And you're going to change party members into the naturalist where we're going to have uh, another character, which I've already started, and I've named her Lydia. So Lydia is going to be the naturalist, and we're going to take control of her. And then she's gonna, you're eventually gonna get free roam with her where you're gonna go to this town. And that's in this town is where you're gonna meet Driftwood and Tiana. So you're not gonna be blocked out of content. It's just gonna matter. It's, it's gonna give the player options on what they wanna do first and what they feel like doing. So I'm gonna balance. That's why we're changing party members. So, because if you had the same party, by the time you get to over here, you might be overpowered. Or if you went this way first, you go over here, you might be overpowered. But if we switch party members, we can balance towards that individual party member. And then they can all coalesce and join up at approximately the same level. I have it planned out and it should work good. Well, I just can't speak very good. <laughs> Let's uh, go through the game now. Pause the music real quick. And uh, I'll show you to up to the point where we got to. Um, and I won't have to go through and read all this. I'm sure you guys have seen this over and over. So we'll be using the uh, Sakamoto uh, plugin that speeds up everything. So everything's going to be running a little bit faster. Thank you for that. Uh, Sound Cypher, that's what he goes by. Let's get our song randomizer. Let's take use of this. Let's change it to sound. Let's get our free items. Oh, I also created a random, uh, a small random loot script. This will be on file 3. Created a small random loot script. For when you go to the junk piles in the sewers, I will show you later on when we get there. But basically, what you get is, is, is a little bit random. So each playthrough will be different because this will happen quite often throughout the game. Like, you want to be able to control what the player is going to be getting to a certain extent, but you don't want it to be static because uh, it'll just take away from the possible potential replayability. Change the LP or the TP uh, cost on slice. I upped it by a little bit because you're going to get 20 attack when you attack with uh, Ujigatana with Driftwood that Driftwood has starts with. Added some animations in. I don't know if I did that last episode, but put in some animations for the skills. Um, I think I I added the the TP healing skill for Tiana in the last episode, but that will come into play. First, I, the first fights should be pretty easy, so... So the player could immediately go into the sewers. Boom. Once we go into the sewers, we're not coming back. Make sure you have all your things. You ready to go? Uh, no, I'm not ready. Hurry, we don't have time to spare. So, you definitely don't want to jump right into the sewers. <clears throat> because you can find a bunch of diff uh, different stuff, and you can get a boss fight. So we found firewood there. 
We can go up here and get some armor upgrades, some leather boots. We could uh, get some hints from the NPCs. I put another NPC down on the other side. So that's uh, letting the player know about the action button. Oh, there was one over here somewhere. Yeah, got that. This is the only uh, house that says the door is locked. The rest of them says that they're stuck. The door is stuck. So this is the new... Uh, I forgot what I said in here. Be sure to check every nook and cranny for items that can help you on your journey. There are many hidden items scattered around. So just to let the player know if they haven't already found items, that they can look around for items and, and find stuff that's not immediately there. Leather gloves. Like for example over here, you can get some refreshing water. And there's some more of it right here. And I definitely want to fight the first boss. Chain oh, mean, so mean. Changed General Ge Gezer's uh, stats around a little bit. I buffed him a bit because I felt he was a bit easy and I wanted this to be a hard fight since it was optional. Gave him a spell, made a spell called Lightning Bolt. Ooh. But it might be too hard, you know. Might honestly might be too hard because I, I haven't tested it since I've upped it. Uh, that was a bad idea. I thought I would be able to kill him. But basically, I think we're going to die here. Let's go ahead and uh, load. I want to try that one more time. If anything, his agility seems a bit high. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at that. I upped his attack. I upped his magic attack. I gave him a spell. Um, upped his defense, his magic defense, and his agility. So the fact that he went first, I'm okay with. But I think we'll go with that. Maybe we'll just drop this back down. I didn't up by a lot. I, I upped it by, uh, I think, five on each. So we'll just we'll keep it like that. So his attack is slightly higher than his magic attack. Um, let's try that again. Maybe I got lucky because I went through and I was like, he seemed like a pushover. And for an optional boss, it should be challenging. So we'll see. If we if by taking five attack away from him, it's gonna make a difference. It's just that dual attack is really really powerful. Here's where you definitely want to use some of the items that you've been granted. So the refreshing water is going to be, over time, less less strong as the strong juice, less powerful as strong juice. But at the beginning, the, the plus 500 base is really, really makes it uh, a lot better. So this would be a, a fight that you would need to use the items that you found in town to use most likely. Which I'm okay with because you get a, a weapon upgrade. That works. So let's go ahead and use the other water right here. And I figured since at the beginning, uh, you know, we had a lightning bolt go off. And in the fight, it, he doesn't have any spells. Well, where did the lightning bolt come from? Just for the sake of logic and to make the use of that lightning bolt. I wanted it to happen. I wanted that lightning bolt to work. So I just gave him the lightning. I made a skill and, and gave him lightning to make it work, you know, like the lightning bolt came from the general and... Hmm, I guess healer should be healed first. Oh, I didn't equip the armor. That's what made this harder. I went around, got the armor, didn't equip it. I actually gave him more HP as well. We still have a shot. Equip, not equipping that armor was a new mistake and probably shouldn't be able to win because not fully using everything that was given. That was a nice critical. But with 25% chance, 1 out of 4 should be critical. Also, the fact that he has a lightning bolt is better because then he doesn't dual attack and dual attack and dual attack over and over. Even though it's, I think it's priority 3, it's still going to be, if he does it over and over, especially while enraged, it's going to make this like super, super hard.
So instead of decreasing his uh, stats, uh, I probably shouldn't have. I, I know that I, I set it up just right. The problem wa is why I died so fast is I didn't equip that gear that we were given, the boots and the gloves. Uh, I think I showed this in the last episode, not sure, but the Uruks come to the aid of the general, and, uh, and Driftwood's kind of shocked about it. Because usually the the place that the Empire that General Gauz works for, they would be opposed. This looks funny now that I look at it again. I uh, need to put corners on here, but oh well, nitpicking. If um, you try to go back, it kind of forces you back in, into the sewers and says we don't have time. We can't go back now. We have to find another way through the sewers. There's more than one path. We can lose them in here. So that's uh, we'll go ahead and take the progress there. Um, but also want to equip. Yeah, let's equip our healer. Lots of upgrades for her. I don't even know if I equipped the shield. I think I did. But we got uh, leather gloves, leather boots. I also moved, like I said I was going to do. I think the hands were all the way down here because I added those last. But I ended up, I ended up uh, moving that all the way to where I thought it should be, right underneath accessories. So now it doesn't say earring, ring, relic, aura stone, gloves at the bottom. You know, like gloves should be higher, I would imagine. What I'm going to do with aura stones, really, really cool idea. Um, how do I explain it? Like, um, you can you can now with the Unflash plugins make, well, you could have done this like a week ago or two weeks ago, but you can make it so um, you can learn skills with passive states. So you can, you can have certain states give you skills. So with an aura stone, it's going to turn like, uh, a fire wizard into an ice wizard, or um, like like you can change your class around basically depending on what aura stone you get. So instead of awarding jobs, I think I'm going to make like a custom aura stone system to where you can like augment your your current class with uh, different skills, and uh, I think that might make it more interesting and, and just a little bit different than. Uh, the, the standard. I added some greenery, some like moss around. Oh, I forgot to do a battle back, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna do a battle back. <clears throat> I think I told you guys in the last episode, I made it so that you can. Um, I, oh, I swapped the the blind with the the clear eyes with the an anti venom uh, skill. So by the time you get poison, you can get poison. Um, you'll have the skill to get rid of it. Also, you can notice the icon. Uh, right there, which um, I like that little bit of change. And uh, kind of optimize it so by the time that you're out of MP, if you, you, you've been playing uh, correctly, by the time you're out of MP, you should probably have um, the TP heal skill. Plus you have MP regen items if you don't anyway. So this little greenery stuff added that. Extended this one tile more to the right. Thinking about putting something at the top there, but I haven't thought about what yet. And that kind of looks cool where the bats are in the dark with the light. I like that, but I'm going to do a battle back just because it just makes more sense to have a battle back. So we'll probably add that. Now I know that uh, I think my either 12, 11 or 12 or 13, the level that I was testing this boss battle at, so I need to check what level we're at here. If we're close to leveling, we might grind one extra battle. That heal, uh, seems a little, that drain bite seems a little weak, so I might uh, buff that a little bit. So here's our boss. Uh, I also want to put like a little shake as soon as you enter uh, this map so and a little bit of dialogue saying what was that or some sort of flavor so custom icon custom animation new skill Probably should have used an item there. Oh, but we got a critical heal. Love the fact that you can do that. So that was a clutch critical heal right there. Let's go ahead and use an item. Let's put a strong juice because it's poison, so the regen will counteract some of that.
And then the fact that we have HP bars, I love it. So that you can sort of gauge, like, when you're about to, how much damage you're doing, and when you're about to win, and it just helps so much. So what I'm going to do is, he's already regenerating. Um, I think we're just going to go with MP and pray. We have a Phoenix Brew just in case. So we ran out of MP there. Also, I forgot to get the items, the gear in the sewers. That's what it was. Uh, a little under leveled. I went straight to where the boss fight was, so the player may not do that. So the player is probably going to be a little bit higher level and maybe have better gear. So before I start thinking about nerfing this boss at all, you got to take that into consideration. That your player, you're making the game and you know where to go. We're going to trick. But the person who's playing your game may not, like, really know, you know, where to go. So, uh, I want to say consequently, but, uh, incidentally, um, they'll be a little bit higher levels and maybe have more of the items. Or less of the items, because you know where the items are at. You place them, so you have to take that into consideration. We need that crit heal. Come on, come on, come on. No. Oh, I have an idea for a new skill. A skill that's got like 50%. This is a drain skill that I created, the funnel root, so it's gonna heal him. Ooh, and it's a powerful heal too. 500 with the heal. This is making this really challenging. Really need that uh, TP heal. Really, really need that TP heal by now. Oh no, that gonna kill him. 19 HP. Oh, this isn't good. Uh, need that crit heal. Come on, Tiana. And I, I actually noticed the spelling error on the, after this if we managed to beat him, which we're probably not going to be able to. Yeah, I don't, I don't see it happening. Funnel root is too strong. We're out of uh, healing stuff. This is good though. I don't think the players should be able just to rush through it that fast. They, they could go get the armors and that'll give them one more level. I think with one more level, we probably could have done this. But after this, uh, even though we're gonna die, um, that's pretty much the ending of the chapter one, the beginning, the intro. So, cool. I'm, I'm actually satisfied with that. I want to add some things. Let's, uh, let's get our tunes playing again. Let's put uh, a battle back to the sewers. So we're going to go ahead and go here. So there is a battle back to this one. I went with cobblestones, pool, and cliff, but not on this next one. So let's go ahead and do that. Edit this to be cobblestones, pool, and cliffs. And then I think I kept the battle the battle music because I remember switching between music so often that it, it kind of like stops the audio engine. So we have to slowly test one and not double click twice in a row really quickly. That, that was the one we ended up landing on so. Which is appropriate for when you come in here the first time, but then when you come in here after the event, it's not appropriate anymore. I think that might be our castle music. Oh, come on, that was a slow click there. Don't tell me it froze the lock the audio engine. Yep, that's what happens. You notice you'll, I notice there'll be like a little loading thing, the audio engine's locked. So what you have to do is save the game. When this happens, this is a quick fix. Save the game, load the game again, and then uh, it'll work until you, until you try to play background music. At some point, it'll just lock it up again over and over.
Uh, we use that one at uh, the beginning. This is a, a play on Kepka's theme, I think. I like the beginning, but I feel like it gets a little crazy. It's not appropriate for like a sewer type thing. Mm -mm. Love this song, but we, we have to find the beat. Because every song is going to like imply a certain emotion or feel or beat. I think we should set this for when we fight the boss. Oh yes, we're gonna do that. Final Fantasy VI underscore black. Okay, so we're gonna uh, we'll set that there. So what we're gonna do for this event is we're gonna change uh, be before the battle process. We're gonna change. We're gonna set background. Oh, no, wait, wait. Change battle background music. That's what we're gonna do. We're going to set that one to this one. Yeah, that seems appropriate for that bomb. Also at the beginning, what we're going to do is an auto run event. We'll just put it up here. So we'll do a new auto run. And then at the end of it, it's going to do a self sweep. Oh, not a With a new page. Self with A on. This is not going to be auto run. Let's start at the end and look the way back. What it's going to do is just uh, shake the screen a little bit and then show a little text saying, uh, like, Keanu freaks out or something. The gap window's coming out again. Fly sent out uh, the beta thing. It's gonna be cool. So you see, we have the fade out screen here. After you beat uh, the battle prophecy, little animation goes and uh, shows like the last attack or whatever. I'm gonna do one more end. Yeah, I'm gonna do one more end. We'll do a wait here, copy that. We'll put it right before he dies. So paste that, and then we're gonna do an animation right here. New animation. And it's going to be on the player this time, and it's gonna do like a, a claw physical. Yeah. So he's gonna like scratch Tiana. And here's where I get the stone. So this is going to be a similar what happens if you go to the west from the beginning, except he's not going to, Driftwood isn't going to say, there's a castle to the west, he's going to say there's a town to the south, you know, and he'll take you there. So we got our auto run, we edited that to give, uh, this is going to fade out the screen, so it's going to give the player a clue of what's going to happen and where you have to go to get these party members back again. It shouldn't be too long, it'll be like a short scenario thing. So here's the um, the random junk, and you can see instead of awarding an item here, I'm calling on a common event, the junk pile loot common event, so I'll show you that real quick. So when you uh, access these 
when you access this common event by going to the junk files, it's going to call on this. It's going to roll a random number with the control variables, 1 to 5, and uh, it's going to show the same animation uh, each time. But if uh, we have five conditional branches here, and if the, the number comes up one, you're going to get a rat tail. It's going to show you icon rat tail. If you get the number two, jelly ink, moldy bread, firewood, and then the seemingly useless junk. So you can get different stuff. Not a huge pool of items to go through, but it adds a little bit of variance. Since there's four things and five items, you can even end up two of the same item. One, two, three, four of those junk, junk things. Here's the other treasure chest that you guys have seen. Here's the first one, which you can't really miss. And then here's the third one. So there's three three upgrades in here that I don't think I even put on. I didn't get. But if you were to run, uh, run through here, go get this item, run down here, go get this item, and then go to the north, by that time you should have your TP heal move and uh, be another level or two higher. So. Uh, I adjusted their experience rates, uh, the experience curves. So instead of 20 across, just 15 across, this is going to speed it up a lot. Um, this makes it so that it's like 10,000 towards the end. Because um, what we're going to do is we're going to add uh, max level 999. So the player is going to have the potential to go up to almost level 1,000. So, uh, you know, obviously the story's not the storyline won't take you that far, but you're just going to be able to, I want the game so that at the end of the game, it's not like completely game over. It shows the credits, and then it lets you save the game, and it lets you continue on to keep playing and, and exploring more of all the systems. So I want to have some systems involved that will uh, motivate the player to continue playing after they've beaten the main storyline. Also, like arena and like monster arena type coliseum things that I know in Final Fantasy X, one of the biggest uh, things I liked was the monster arena because. You can beat the game in a super quick, you know, but I spent an extra, I don't know, 70 hours just maxing characters and maxing the spear grade because I wanted to be able to beat all those custom monsters, you know. So I want to have that similar kind of series. Uh, what were we going to do here? Um, we need to design the, the other sewer map. We need to add the forest. We need to add the castle. So let's pick one thing. I think what we'll do is we're going to add the castle. So let's go ahead and go world map. Let's load the castle. I mean, it's well designed. Might as well use it. It's beautiful. Let's go ahead and add the interiors as well. I guess we'll set up our transfer event. Here. 
take you to the second floor. Right here. And this is just going up. Just coming from the top. That makes sense. It's right here. Um, should we copy? No, I think to keep it. We'll edit this by one tile. And what I'm gonna do is instead of right here, right here. So just copy this, paste it here, edit this, edit this transfer so that instead of right here, it's right here. Going to this one, we're going to do the transfer back in. So. Okay, where are we at? This is when you come up, right? You're coming up here? Okay, we need to go back down. Oh, we still have to uh, edit that before I forget, huh? Um, let's go back to the sewers super quick. Edit this one, because we specified... We found this one and that went on like a tangent, like, oh, we gotta make that the battle one, but uh, it's currently the entire area music, so let's find music that's uh, suitable for the sewers. Moves to major key. I like that song, but we need to find an appropriate beat. Oh, this is the death on a death on a plane. I like that. We'll go with that. So this was FF6 death underscore. I also want to match that to this one, so we'll do that. Go ahead and do that. Now there's a really like that track. But we're gonna hear it in game a lot too, so at least for a little while. Oh, we were editing transfers. This is going to go to the third floor. And I think what we'll do is have this transfer to the balcony. This is the second floor, right? So let's look outside. This is the second floor, I would say this is probably the third floor. Or no, the third floor is like the royal chambers. We'll have to populate this with uh, events and NPCs and stuff, but we'll do that. Right, this is going to go outside. I kind of want to do like a hidden area in here. 
you can go through this tile and clear something, you can get a treasure right here. Or that's that's more all like towards the the end, polishing and stuff, adding secrets. And we'll get to that though. Like uh, the armor, this is like the, the barracks type thing. You can actually start in here, I think, if we transfer the player here. And you're like a soldier of this castle. When do you think of a name for the castle? So yeah, leave a comment in the uh, leave a comment below if you have a, an idea for names of like the world, names of the towns, names of the castle, names of other characters, whatever. I think we're done with the transferring of the transfer Oh no. We'll do something here, but for now, we're gonna block that off. Okay. You guys see this? Okay, right click, regular time. This game is not having it. <laughs> you shall pass! Just, uh, we're gonna have these go. That's fine.
There. I mean, now we have a functional castle. We don't have anything in the castle besides default stuff, but... A very nice looking castle, and the maps are all tied together. So we can start planning our event sequence. But we still have uh, to do the, uh, the alternate route. This is what I was talking about earlier. It's like, when you decide to have the player go through a non-linear storyline, you have to just program twice or three times or four times as much stuff because you have to build all of the, the possible branches even though the player is only going to go down one of those branches but I think the end result is going to make the game better so we're going to do that so the castle's set up we don't have the vents yet but let's go ahead and add the forest then Go back to the world map. Let's load. We're using a lot of uh, a lot of pre pre-made map sample maps, but the world map is custom. We're gonna do the forest town too. Lydia, anyway. Yeah, let's go ahead and go with the Forest of Decay. And then it can connect to this forest one. Actually, this would be the one that connects to the world map X, so we'll go with this one first, and then inside this one we're going to load Forest of Decay. I need to zoom out a bit to see. Well, it's quite a big difference, isn't it? This seems like really darker, and this seems a lot more vibrant. Is it going to seem like too much of a, a difference? going between these, like if I were to go from here to here, this looks like it's sand, what if we go down this way, oh, okay, this would connect to the world map, it would come from this way going down and then Forest of Decay would connect here and probably start somewhere over here, maybe close this off. Alright, we're going to have to get uh, our hands dirty. Let's start up here. to imagine the scenario. What's going to happen in, in Lydia's scenario? What's going on when the, the player first encounters her, takes control of her? I'd imagine she'd be eating, right? Because everybody's got to eat. She's probably like sitting at a campfire eating and uh, something attacks the camp. And, like, it's normal. You know, she's in this deep forest. Things are always going to come after her, especially when they smell her food. So... We'll have like a little campfire or something over here. And some sort of like homeliness. Like uh, she's kind of lived here for a while, so she's probably, you know, made it look a little bit better. Actually, gonna get rid of those bones. Because she's probably gonna clean it up a little bit. She's not like a necromancer or something. She's, you know, 
a naturalist. Yeah, she's cultivated this area to make it look nice and fit her standards as much as a, a wild woman's standards or a fly or a woman of the wild. I don't know the terms. Words. Do we have like a campfire or something like that? I don't want to have to draw one. I don't think that'll end up very well. We can just check for an event though, let's see that. I probably have a VX Ace campfire uh, tile set, but I'll have to enlarge it real quick. So this is going to be... Sprites, right? Let's open the game folder. Characters. Characters. Yeah. What I'm going to do is... Some of my old games. I should probably show you guys my older VXAs games one of these times. I mean, for VXAs, I thought they were pretty. All this trouble for a campfire. Torches. Do some torches, and then and then Terax lighting with the torches. I like that. Hmm. It's already loaded. What the heck? All right, I just love it like this. Here we go, we're gonna go with torches. They look so pixelated. Oh no. Image size. Go with percent. Just make sure it's locked. We're gonna do one percent. Okay to that. We're gonna file. We're just gonna save that as VXA underscore torches and we're gonna put that in our game folder.
characters. Yeah, we'll save that in characters. That way it'll automatically check this folder and uh, check this folder and we'll be loaded in and stuff. So we should be able to throw up a torch and we'll do Terex lighting and probably call it an episode. So now let's see what project and edit this event and see if that torch is there. There we go. What the heck? I have no idea why it's doing that. I mean... I think this was for a different... ...class at least. The struggles. I just want a campfire! Here we go. We're gonna go with one of these, this is fine. She just did this from the start. Oh, we could do it stepping too. No, we're just gonna flip her out. No, no, it'll, it'll work. We'll go left to right. I think what we'll do is we'll have uh, random encounters in here, but probably 70 steps. And then maybe something to do with this water. We just gotta come over here to the water. And... and then eventually, we probably be able to encounter five or six fights by now. Get to here and then transfer event. Enough for a level or two, so we'll start at like uh, probably level eight or nine. We'll go ahead and do a transfer right here. I feel like there needs to be something in between these two maps. I'm gonna think about what we should put here uh, in between this map and this map. Because how I have it now is you're gonna go down here and then you transfer to this bright and shiny and colorful area. Maybe like show an option saying leave the forest, uh, leave the, the, the thicket or something like that, or like exit the thick forest and make your way to, uh, I don't know, we'll figure something out, but we're going to do it on the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, remember to like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you like this sort of content. Um, you guys are great, thank you so much. Um, we'll be doing episode 10 probably tomorrow, uh, I have to do a concert thing for like a kids charity thing, but um, after that I'm going to have the weekend, unless I get called into work town. We'll see what happens, most likely we're going to have another episode coming out uh, tomorrow. So thank you guys so much for being awesome. Thank you guys for watching, and we will see you in the next episode.